Halo has been one of the most iconic gaming franchises, taking the first person shooter genre and revolutionizing it from the beginning. It evolved about 21 years ago to where we are today, but how did Halo get here? Let's take a step back and find out. During the late 90s, before the idea of Halo arrived, the gaming company Bungie were a small team that developed very few games. At the time, they made PC games for the Macintosh and Microsoft Windows. In 1997, Bungie was working for Apple at the time of developing prototypes for Halo, codenamed Monkey, Nuts, and Blam. It went through a lot of phases, experimentations, and many versions for the team to feel satisfied. First, it turned into a real-time strategy game using an over-the-head view from a third-person perspective. The second phase was using a third-person view and exploring more of the hollow ring planet with the military weapons. The concept of the ring world stayed with them and incorporated a sci-fi style with aliens to fight. Steve Jobs was impressed by Bungie's work and wanted them to help support the Mac with their new game. When Bungie finally had their game set, Steve Jobs wanted to show footage of the game to the public, except Bungie didn't have a title or a soundtrack, so before they revealed their demo, they tried coming up with the name. Then Bungie employee Paul Russell came up with the name Halo. Perfect. In 1999, composer Marty O'Donnell had less than a few days to come up with the soundtrack for the demo footage. The only suggestion he was given for the track was to be ancient, mysterious, and epic. So on his way to work, driving in his car, he started listening to the Beatles, and one melody stuck out to him. Wait, that's it. I got it. When he arrived, he quickly went to work. Finally, at Macworld, Halo was presented. The response was overwhelmingly positive. It was the best thing anyone had ever seen or imagined. A game with impressive graphics, futuristic weapons, and vehicles to travel around an open world map. The hype for this game skyrocketed. However, it was far from complete, and unfortunately, Bungie was running out of money, not knowing how they can complete it now. Even when all felt lost, the developers at Bungie were stumped. Then one fateful day, Bill Gates and Microsoft had created their first gaming console, the Xbox. All they needed now were games for the lineup. So in 2000, Microsoft bought Bungie and this was the best decision ever to be made. With the help from Microsoft, Bungie was finally ready to complete Halo and made it into a first person shooter. In 2001, Halo Combat Evolved was released for the Xbox and it was a massive hit. The graphics were spectacular, the gameplay was jaw-dropping, and the campaign was incredibly epic. The controls were impressive and fun to use, the sound effects were impactful, and the music is still considered a masterpiece to this day. Halo reigned on top as one of the best FPS games of all time. Anyone who has played this game, and myself included, would know this is the most fun and enjoyable experience that many have ever played. Challenging players through intelligent AI enemies, using different weapons or methods of overcoming obstacles, and finding the truth behind the mysterious Halo ring. This truly was only the beginning. After Halo CE's release and success, there was already an elephant in the room for Bungie. Whoa. The game did wonderful. Uh, do we, uh, do we make another? Okay then. During 2002, the sequel for Halo showed its first trailer, and holy shit, it was happening. Bungie then went to work for Halo 2's demo to show at E3. To make it more impressive, they used a new type of graphics engine to make the game look even better. In 2003, people at E3 were given an early sneak peek at what Halo 2 will look like. It was phenomenal. A greeting from Sergeant Johnson, a cinematic cutscene, new weapons, dual wielding, hijacking vehicles, and new enemies. Truly another anticipated game of the year. Okay team, good job on the demo. Now let's finish up this game. Wait, we don't have a game? Then let's try to make it with the new style. The console isn't powerful enough. Well, balls. The sequel was one of Bungie's most disastrous development crunches ever. Developers were working for days and nights, starting from scratch, cutting ideas, cutting content and stories. Multiplayer was slightly rushed, but everything else was really rushed. The saddest part was that this was supposed to be the final Halo game. Except with the development rush, the game had been cut and left the campaign with a cliffhanger. Then on November 9th, 2004, fans were outside in enormous lines. 
the sales for Halo 2 were bigger than any blockbuster movie during that time. Once the game was released, it sold over 500,000 copies in 24 hours, breaking records and making $125 million. With the addition of Xbox Live for multiplayer, the game did even better globally. Halo 2 made gaming history, even if it wasn't perfect. After the release of the game, it left many fans shocked, mostly really happy with how the story turned out, making it to be one of the best campaigns ever. While some didn't understand the new additions, like getting the chance to play as an elite, aka the Arbiter. Although players did enjoy the new levels, the new scenery that was added to the Halo ring, new weapons added to make new strats on the fly, and finally holding an energy sword for the first time, which made another incredible experience overall. It's ironic when things don't go as planned, but still work in the end. As for Bungie, they still had one more card up their sleeve. 2006, E3. When Halo 3 was announced, you have to agree, this gave you goosebumps every time. As Marty O'Donnell's new Halo theme played, it was perfect, combining that with the best commercials to advertise the game. Obviously, you're making history. Anticipation was beyond what people were feeling when they waited for this game. Bungie had a lot more ideas this time with Halo 3. Now with the new Xbox 360 and its features, it allowed the team to have more creative freedom, enhanced graphics, new items to use, wider maps to travel, real-time battles within cutscenes, better multiplayer, but the only downside was that the story didn't feel as strong as Halo 2. As I said before, the original plan was to end the game from Halo 2. Even though they had to complete the game, the story wasn't meant to end this way. Halo 3 is still the most awesome game, but I think it was a unanimous decision for the team after an exhausting journey they had. When it was all said and done, the game was ready for release with another enormous fanbase selling over 14.5 million copies in its first 20 hours, making $170 million on the first day, and $300 million in its first week. As expected, the fans loved the game while enjoying its online multiplayer, forging your own maps to share to the community, mechanics brought from Halo 2 and over to 3, and a soundtrack like no other. This really felt like a legendary way to finish Halo. The team at Bungie knew one thing that they were done with Halo, or in this case they were done with Master Chief's story. With an already successful trilogy, they believed this was the end of a chapter, except they were still working under Microsoft, and their deal was to make more Halo games. As a response, they had two side projects before they decided to depart. One project was a prequel that tied into Halo 2 and 3, which was Halo 3 ODST, alongside with Halo Reach, another prequel that begins before Halo CE. These two strayed out from what the original trilogy did and explores the fight with new characters. In 2009, Halo 3 ODST came out and used a diverse cast of characters you play as while you piece together the story in the city, New Mombasa. The game takes place right as the UNSC chases after the Covenant in slip space, leaving our characters in a wreck. The experience really immersed players with this new take and learning more within the Halo universe. In 2010, Halo Reach was released. This time, you play as a Spartan working alongside a Spartan team aka Noble Six, where you're at war with the Covenant and you fight to try and defend your planet Reach. It introduced a lot of different types of weapons, enemies, vehicles, spaceships, and of course, a new team. Each Spartan takes on the challenge of fighting alongside with you, than your typical Marines. You play alongside the best of the best. The story brought a greater impact to the end of Halo Reach and the events that led throughout the Halo universe. Both these titles reminded players why Bungie was the best when it came to Halo, especially when they departed as an independent company to work on new games. People were left worried now. Was this truly the end of Halo? Well, of course not. Since Microsoft still owns Halo, they still wanted to make more games, even without Bungie. So Microsoft hired the next team to continue the Master Chief story, introducing 343 Industries. During the Xbox 360 era, 343 started development on Halo 4. Originally, Halo 4 was almost developed by Bungie at some point, but opted for Halo Reach instead. So 343 took a different approach to Halo than the previous entries. It was an obvious continuation, but made a lot of changes. They first changed everyone's designs without an accurate reason. 
They changed the enemy's design as well. They allowed you to sprint. You can't explore much of the maps. The cutscenes were more cinematic. You can execute enemies. You have limited ammo and a lot more changes. It was obvious towards players when they tried it. To most, it didn't feel like Halo, even when it looked close to it. The campaign wasn't all that engaging. The story felt confusing and inconsistent at times. It was something that felt like a Call of Duty in terms of gameplay. Some say these choices were made on purpose to not be like Halo since these developers believe they can do better. I mean, not to be rude, uh, this is just me speculating at this point. However, it sold well, but there was still mixed reception between the fans that played Halo 4. It has some good moments, they kept Chief and Cortana the same throughout the game, yet it felt empty with barely an engaging purpose other than new robotic enemies and another cliche alien threat. Even the Covenant returned for an inconvenient reason. There were a lot of changes to the multiplayer that definitely looked like Call of Duty, but I digress as this was only 343's first attempt at Halo. In 2014, 343 celebrated Halo's anniversary in the best way possible. By bringing a collection of Master Chief's story, Halo Reach, ODST on PC and console, remaking Halo CE and Halo 2 in HD graphics, while they retained the same geometry maps. Uh, kinda. They also brought Blur Studios to completely remake Halo 2's cutscenes with motion capture and CG animation. Now it looks like a movie. This was massively praised by the Halo fanbase. It was awesome to play every campaign, play online multiplayer, play challenges, earn collectibles, and many more. While this was big news, the only issue to all of this was its awful launch. 343 is still working on updating the collection to this day. Not the best work, but they're doing alright. Afterwards, they finally added cross compatibility to PC and console players for online matches or co-op. In 2015, Halo 5 aka Halo Guardians was next in line from 343, continuing from Halo 4. But, there was a catch to this now. Halo 5's story wasn't as compelling as we thought it would be. You see, the game starts right off the bat with no explanation as to how we started here. It goes into exposition mode constantly, not giving enough for players to enjoy or understand the game. The plan from 343 was you needed to do some homework. They released books for people to read to understand the story, then watch videos on YouTube, then play Halo MCC, then play another spin-off title just to understand this game which wasn't really fair to newcomers or the Halo veterans. What tipped the scale more was that Master Chief was pushed aside from this game for another Spartan. He's barely playable, and this was something that felt wrong to the fans. Not only that, the marketing that advertised the game wasn't even in the game, period. Did I fail the test? What went wrong here? A lot of 343's writing team for Halo 5 didn't add up. There was a constant in-game exposition, a confusing timeline, and very different form to the original Halo trilogy. At this point, the game became very competitive and technical. It was starting to be designed a lot around esports and changing the game's formula. It felt like a massive step backwards from 343 with Halo 5. This game was treated very negatively and left a bitter taste to many. The only question is, what are their next plans for Halo? In 2018, Microsoft held a presentation for the next games coming up, alongside the newest next-gen console, the Xbox Series X and S. God, these names. Then a teaser for Halo Infinite was announced. It looked beautiful, but the public was mostly skeptical. After Halo 5, everyone wasn't sure what 343's approach was. Then the huge news was announced, as Joe Staten, the original Halo writer for Bungie, was back to work on Halo Infinite. This was interesting news to the fans, maybe there was hope. Then in 2019, another trailer dropped, and it looked promising. Of course, no gameplay was shown, but the engine running the game looked good. Then of course, there were changes to plans due to stressing matters in 2020. Then 343 finally showed off some gameplay. Fans were excited while some had few critiques. The game looked and sounded impressive with an open world setting. The enemy's original designs returned and it looked like Halo. Then after a while, the game was delayed to 2021 and news articles started appearing. Different art directors leaving. This left many people worried that something wrong could be happening behind the scenes. Yet 343 remained quiet ever since then. So finally in 2021, Halo Infinite was here. Multiplayer launched for free and everyone immediately went online. The start of multiplayer was small and there wasn't much to do until the next season passed. 
there were challenges and customization options for armor, vehicles, and weapons. Although the game had some online issues and balancing that needed updating from time to time. Of course, 343 still needs time to work on their online matches. It's not the best work, but they did alright. Ooh, deja vu. The campaign followed suit that year. It did incredibly well and players were enjoying this new story. Although the campaign was a lot better than Halo 5, it felt like it was missing a lot of key features. The cutscenes weren't outgoing and the open world was great but lackluster. The first teaser for Halo Infinite showed missing assets and a different art direction at the time. The nice part is Master Chief was back in action, taking on a new threat known as the Banished. This threat was first introduced from one of the spin-offs titled Halo Wars. Now that they're front and center, they shift the story. Infinite also involved doing objectives, upgrading your gear, finding weapons on the go, different encounters, boss battles, collecting intel, and finding new allies. So it was sort of a balancing act of good and not bad, just a mediocre story and gameplay to its core. It's a nice experience, but it doesn't reach the bar that Bungie had. Then, nothing. This was the problem circulating around Infinite. There was a lack of content. The moment people finished the campaign and played through most of the online matches, got burned out or lost interest. Even if 343 continues work on the events and maps, it doesn't have a consistent point in the game or no interest for the players anymore. 343 also plans on including co-op for the campaign, except players aren't exactly excited since there is hardly much to do in Infinite anyways. As for me, I enjoyed a lot of what Infinite provided, but I was disappointed that it didn't exceed my expectations. Every Halo game made by Bungie had an exact vision and creative idea, knowing what their game is and how to explore it in fun and unique ways. The way they created their formula allowed them to find new ways of expanding it and making it more amazing. I don't know what the future holds for 343, but if they don't know what to do with Halo, then I'm not sure it will end well. As for the TV show, uh, that'll be another video. Or not. We'll see.